Hi. Now let's try to understand how we can perform the switching of AC loads. Now when it comes to AC loads, <coughs> things becomes most interesting because this is what a real application may look like. Maybe you want to turn on, let's say, lights in your room, which we are anyways going to see an experiment about. Let's say you want to turn on fan, you want to turn on appliances. Most of the household appliances that you see are operating on AC voltage. Depending upon where you are, we may have 230 volt, 50 hertz or 110 volt, 60 hertz or 50 hertz like that supply. I'm not going into the basics of these things because I'm assuming that you know something about what kind of AC supply you have. But when you have AC supply to switch or when you have AC supply on which you want to turn on your device, then this kind of transistorized switching circuit will just not, not work at all. Because a transistor is an active device, first thing. It will definitely not work at all with AC circuit. Second thing is, there is no isolation here from the microcontroller circuit to transistor and load. So first thing is, it will not work at all, that's for sure. And another thing, we can't use that. Because if we do, then the microcontroller circuit may get damaged due to the AC voltage. So we need a different kind of circuitry in order to interface AC devices or in order to turn on and off AC devices with a microcontroller like ESP32. What would be the kind of circuit that we will create or what do we use? Let's see. So what we use for this purpose, it's something called as a relay. Relay is a very old and most widely used device for AC device switching. The nature of relay is such that it just doesn't matter whether you use AC or DC switching. Just that because the relay works literally like a mechanical switch, it is best suitable for AC devices. Let's see how the relay construction is and how we can turn on it. So a relay usually consists of a coil. It has points, let's say L1, L2, depending upon which symbol you refer. The point names may be different. Some may call it A, B, some may call it X1, X2, C1, C2, whatever it can be. So it does consist of an electromagnetic coil. And then there is a magnetic coupling. Now, instead of that magnetic coupling, what I'll do is I'll just show you like this. So there are terminals, three different terminals to this relay. One is called as, let's say, you know, one is called as, let's say, NC. The third one is called as common. The construction is very simple. Let me show you how it works. <clears throat> so there is a small spring attached to this common terminal, which keeps it connected to NC all the time. Literally all the time, common is connected to NC when the relay is kept on a table. When the relay circuit is powered off, there is no voltage given, no excitation given, the common is connected to NC using a spring uh, pull-up. Now what happens is, when you give a rated voltage to L1, L2, there is no polarity to it. You can give here positive, negative here, or negative here and positive here. And there is a rated voltage for coil. Let's say it's a 12 volt coil or 24 volt coil, like that. Let's say if we have a 12 volt coil. And let's say if I give 12 volt across these two points, being a complete passive coil, polarity doesn't matter. What happens is the coil gets magnetized. Because of the magnetism that is induced in the coil, the common terminal is attracted or pulled against this spring tension. And now this connection is broken and the common is now connected to NO. How long it happens? As long as you have kept the 12 volt supply given to the coil. As long as the supply is energized, common will be connected to N. When you remove this excitation, when you remove the voltage applied across L1, L2, what happens is the magnetism dies down and the coil again goes back or the common again goes back to NC. So the relay is switched or the common is connected to NO that is normally open when you give supply to the relay coil. If you don't, then the common gets connected to NC. Now, because of this, what happens is, let's say I want to perform a switching circuit. 
So in the typical switching circuit, what I'll do is, let's say this is my AC supply and this is my switch, which I usually want to give. And this is my load. It can be any type of load, tube light, bulb, whatever you want to connect over here. Now, when you press this switch, when you make this contact, the load turns on. And when you release the contact, the load turns off. The circuit becomes interesting when you use relay in a very simple way that this one terminal will be your NO and the other terminal will become common. So when you turn on the relay by giving supply voltage across L1, L2, what will happen is the NO and common will get shorted with each other. There is literally a mechanical contact. There is a sound of tick and the load will turn on. When you remove the excitation voltage, the load will turn off. As simple as that. I'll also try to create a complete circuit for it so that you can remember it very well. I'm going to keep this for now. Now let me open Easy EDA that I'm going to use to create the circuits and I will show you how the same can be done. Now look at this. This is how a typical relay symbol will look like. Forget about the part numbers. This is how it will look like. So there are two points to which we call as coil. We have to give a supply voltage. And then you can see there are these three terminals. Now, as you can see here, the number one and five are connected to each other. So I can denote them as NO and this one is NO and this one is NC. Sorry, this one is NO. This one is NC and this one is common. Let's call it C. Let's call it NC. Let's call it NO. Okay. Now, when you have this kind of configuration, switching circuit or the actual load side circuit will be like this. So, let me see if I have an AC supply source or okay. so let's see if I get an alternator any AC source let's just call it an AC source let's take a bulb for example Any kind of bulb will do actually. This is just a symbolic representation that we are going to have. Now, to turn, let's say this bulb and to turn on this using this, let's not call it alternator, but with AC supply, the circuit configuration will go like this. So, this point, one point of load will get connected to the supply. other point of this supply there is no plus minus actually to ac but never mind so nc sorry one of the two terminals of common and no will go to supply and the other one will go to the other point of load this is how you will connect your load across relay in order to turn it on and off and now the biggest question is if the load works on plus 12 volt how can we give this 12 volt from microcontroller we simply just cannot so how this relay will turn on using a microcontroller here is a microcontroller so the answer short answer is no you cannot directly turn on the load or you cannot directly turn on the relay using microcontroller alone. Then what will you do? The answer was there in the previous video itself. You can use or you can treat this coil as DC load. And what you can do is you can use an NPN transistor over here. So one point of load will go to 12 volt. 
second point will go to base of transistor uh, sorry collector of transistor emitter of transistor will go to ground and towards the base will connect a 3.3 volt supply and give this to any pin of microcontroller which is our gpl like that and this value can be let's say 330 so this is how your complete relay switching circuit will come into picture now there is one short tiny teeny problem with this kind of circuit just a moment and that problem is because just call it bulb because the relay coil is in inductive mode when it powers on it gets magnetized it stores charges but when you let's say you make this pin zero then what will happen the stored charges are not going anywhere and therefore the relay may keep turned on or may stay turned on for a while so you need some kind of protection circuit for this relay to switch off properly and that protection circuit can come in the form of a diode so what you need to do is connect a diode in reverse bias condition or reverse bias configuration across the coil so the cathode of diode should go to plus 12 volt now because of that what happens is when you turn on the relay the diode is not in picture at all it is totally reverse biased but when you switch it off when you make this pin zero what happens is the junctions are not forward bias they are reverse bias so the connection from this point towards ground is broken now what happens because of the stored charges into this relay coil the polarities of this relay coil get reversed and it gives a conducting path through this diode in itself for the charges to get released and quickly within 100 or 200 milliseconds at the max the relay coil is discharged and even 100 to 200 milliampere is a bigger time i'm saying it quickly gets discharged and you immediately see the relay being turned off now apart from that some may also want my job is to give you everything that might be needed maybe you are creating an industrial project apart from that some also want to have a led as an indication of the relay being turned on or not so you can connect an led like this this is totally optional okay this led circuit that i'm giving here is totally optional it's not mandatory at all but if you connect this one like this what happens is the led will turn on along with the relay coil and so when you make this pin one relay is turned on the ac device will turn on and this led will also turn on giving you an indication just to make sure that the led doesn't consume much current use this as high value resistor when you turn off the relay the led is also turned off giving you an indication this diode acts as a protection circuit for it and this is how it completes your entire circuit now let us copy this part into our presentation or your ready reference okay it may not work like that so what i do is i'll use the snipping sort tool and i will do this clipping not looking that good just a moment let me just take this entire thing here let's just zoom in a bit and let's turn off the grid now it's good copy into the presentation I hope this thing is clear with you now the next question is how do you actually make this kind of connection either you can make this kind of connection on your own or you can also refer to the readily available relay modules if I open one I'm just going to show you one there are many different vendors from whom 
you can purchase this thing but let me show you one so in india robo is something i prefer to buy from so you get 5 volt or you get one channel relay if you look at it closely you can see there are those three resistors for the leds and transistor and the other led for switching then there is a small switching diode you can see and there is a small transistor also relay and the three terminals taken out now if you read the relay the coil voltage is 5 volts so you need to give 5 volt as supply here input means the com signal coming from controller and ground means the ground supply of controller if you read on the relay then it says 10 ampere 250 volt ac 10 ampere 30 volt dc this is the current rating of your relay when you are connecting loads like this to your relay again you have to take into account how much current your load is going to take and depending upon how much load it takes you might change the relay module you are using readily available you get a single channel relay you get a dual channel relay now this dual channel relay also comes with an optocoupler so that whatever switching circuit you connect over here it has no effect on the microcontroller side the signal is optically isolated so here the grounds are not made common with the relay coil so you get different type of circuits and different type of loads as you can see here so depending upon what is your requirement you may use any such type of single channel relay module multi channel relay module even you get four channel relay eight channel relay you also get a higher current relay modules to be used you can see there are eight channel relay modules also four channel also it's all based upon your requirement i hope it clarifies the concepts of relay switching in the next video we'll try to connect an ac load actually and then try to make this switching happen right in front of our eyes on the hardware that i have thank you for watching this video